Hey guys, what's going on and welcome to my Mole video guide. Here I will tell you everything you need to know before you visit the Mole National Park. The Mole National Park is located in the northern part of Ghana and is its first and largest national park with 4,500 square kilometers of land, which is mainly African bush. It is home to over 700 plants and 90 mammals, including five primate species. Mole is mainly known for the elephants, but also for buffaloes and cobs. The mole elephant is actually a unique breed, which is very non-hostile and non-aggressive towards humans compared to other elephants in the rest of Africa. Okay, how to get to Mole? The fastest and most convenient way to get to Mole National Park from Accra is to fly to Tamale and then take a cab directly to the park. However, it is also the most expensive one. The flight will set you back 43 US dollars per person and will take about one hour. The cab to the park will cost around 50 US dollars and will take about three hours to reach the park. This is what we did and it was hassle-free and fast. The more budget-friendly option is, for example, taking a bus from Accra to Tamale. This will cost only 17 US dollars and the buses of the STC company are very comfortable. However, you are looking at an 11 hour long journey. Since you are in Tamale, you again can get a cab or go for the cheapest option, the Trotro. The Trotro are local minibuses running between Tamale and Larabanga, the village closest to Mole National Park. This will cost only a few US dollars, but prepare for a bumpy ride in a tube brim full vehicle. Since it will stop more often and drive slower, I would guess it will take about four to five hours to reach Larabanga. From Larabanga, you then again need to find a ride to the park and make the last six and a half kilometers. Motor taxis or tuk-tuks will bring you there for a few dollars. Now, before you go, it is important that you inform yourself when to actually go and to have the best experience and most sightings of animals, you will want to go during the dry season. Then the animals will be easier to find since they will be around a few water holes. This means going from December to March. However, prepare for winds from Sahara, making the landscape hazy and the place a little bit dusty. We were visiting in July, in the middle of the rainy season, shortly before the big rainy season in August and September. And I don't know if we were just lucky, but we saw elephants on all of our safaris. During the rainy season, rain comes down mainly during the night, so this should not be an issue. In fact, during our five-day stay, it rained only once for a few hours during daytime. Then it comes to accommodations. Directly in the park, there are only two, the Mole Motel and the Zena Lodge. The Zena Lodge is definitely more luxurious and way more expensive. You will need to dish out about 300 US dollars to stay there for a night. We stayed in the Mole Motel, where the cheapest option is a room for three people without AC and goes for about 40 US dollars. They also have rooms with AC going for 50 US dollars and more luxurious and better equipped chalet for 86 US dollars. Both places have a pool and accept credit cards. However, an advantage of the Mole Motel is that it is very close to the Safari Ranger Station and is super close to wildlife. While staying there, we were frequently visited by monkeys and antelopes during day and night. Now you can also stay in the close by Larabanga village. It's six and a half kilometers away from the park and is definitely the cheapest option. The rooms will be super basic, but the prices will be extremely low. Expect to pay about 10 US dollars. Besides the price, you will be also able to see the village life and visit the Larabanga Mosque, the oldest of Ghana and one of the oldest in the whole West Africa. Now you will need to arrange rides to the park when you want to go on a safari and your dining options might be limited since Larabanga is a very small village. If you always wanted to do a safari but deemed it too expensive, Mole is quite different. Safaris here are extremely inexpensive and are very easy to arrange. Like I said, we stayed in the Mole Motel and it was just a three minute walk to the park center where the rangers inform you about the safaris every day in the morning. Basically, you just show up at 7 a.m. if you want to do a morning safari and at 3 p.m. if you want to do an evening safari. Then the groups are formed, you pay the guide a fee of two US dollars and are good to go. No need to pre-arrange here. You can choose between a walking safari or a driving safari. For driving safaris, you will need your own vehicle or rent one with a driver from the park. The park car fits seven people and goes for 100 US dollars. Since you are splitting the fee between seven people, 
it's really not a lot. There are more expensive safaris like birding and night safaris. We go for 10 to 20 US dollars per hour and need to be pre-arranged at least one day in advance. It is worth noting, but all safaris needed to be paid in cash and there are no ATMs at a Mola Motel or the Zena Lodge. If you are running short on cash, you will need to go to the nearest ATM in Larabanga. Now, what can you actually expect from a safari in a Molin National Park? A walking safari will take you through the bush, a ranger is going to tell you about the different animals you will see, and provide you with interesting information about their lives. You'll most probably see cobs, since Molin has a lot of them, most probably monkeys and maybe elephants. The ranger will try his best to bring you to an elephant, but it is never guaranteed. However, in our case, we saw elephants on our walking safari and on our driving safari. As for the driving safari, you will go much deeper into the bush. You will go much further. The chances of you seeing birds are much higher and it is more likely for you to see a wider variety of species. Okay, but what else is there to do in Molde National Park? Besides safaris, you have an area of opportunities to enjoy your time at the Molde National Park. Whether you go to a Molde Motel or the Zena Lodge, your accommodation should offer a great variety of Ghanaian dishes to sink your teeth into. This is a great way to get to know the local cuisine. Both accommodations offer a pool for you to cool down during the hot daytime hours. The Mole Motel has an amazing viewpoint overseeing a waterhole popular with all kinds of animals, including elephants. Although we were visiting during July and thus in the beginning of a rainy season, we were able to spot the gentle giants getting the refreshing baths. It is also totally worth it going to Larabanga to visit the unique mosque. Alternatively, there is an eco village nearby. Book a tour with a park ranger and see how local shea butter is produced and have a chat with a village doctor and learn about bush medicine. In the eco village, you can also make a trip in a canoe on a nearby river. If you're lucky, and lucky means you're visiting during dry season, you'll be able to see some wildlife, including crocodiles. Okay, in conclusion, the Molin National Park is a great option if you want to try out a safari and don't want to pay too much. In fact, it is extremely inexpensive compared to safaris in South Africa or Botswana. However, I can guarantee you, your experience will be just as amazing, maybe even more, since you'll be able to come closer to the animals. I also want to point out how easy it is to organize a safari. If you stay directly in the park, it is really as easy as showing up to the times at the park ranger center. I would recommend to stay there at least for three nights. This way you can do a few safaris and can use the rest of your time to explore Larabanga, the Echo Village or relax in the pool. Okay guys, this will wrap up the video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something about Mole. Leave me a like and subscribe to see more travel videos. Hope to see you next time. Bye bye.